A boy was walking his bumblebee tied it to a string. The sky was lit up with violet light. A bird began to sing a song of sixpence. Are starting! Yay! Hello! Hello! Um, welcome to Paige's podcast. Um, this is a podcast about books. If you don't know that, that's why we're here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, today we are talking about the Teapot Dome scandal. Teapot Dome. <laughs> Our nation's wealth sucked up by big oil. Woo! <laughs> um, and uh, this was Kate's pick. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to kind of do a? a of course. Two bad dome scandal by oh my gosh, Layton, Layton McCartney, McCartney. Um, is a very thickly packed book with lots of facts, but uh, he's very good about interweaving. Um, little light life point touches uh, gleaned from other people's work, the actual quotes and blah, blah, blah. So it becomes really interesting to read if the dead hookers and swindling and murders and uh, uh, the rest of it wasn't quite enough for you. <laughs> It reads like a soap opera, except for it's all real, and it's it's all about the White House and the Harding administration, uh, and it's literally how we got to where we are now with our natural resources. Yeah. Um, and I, I saw in Goodreads that this was one of your five-star books, so that's one of your favorites. Um <laughs> Books that shook me. <laughs> so changed my life of you. <laughs> so does so why? I mean, is it because I mean were you shocked by all of this? Most of it I was. Now I realize that this is during um the nineteen uh twenties, so it is a time of corruption and gambling and um uh, uh uh, prohibition, which of course had me- opened up a lot of money to be had underground, but knowing that it was so well documented and all the way at the top, um, Harding very clearly said that I had uh, a fall had my approval every step of the way with selling our nation's oil reserves. Mm-hmm. Uh, he appointed literally crooks, uh, people who had records, into his administration. Right. Well, and the crooks basically got Harding the presidency. I mean... They, and it's well documented. Yeah. They they hand chose him um, specifically because he was charming and good looking and um, already an influential politician um, but did not really want to be president and was easily... Uh, Manipulated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, and his wife was very ambitious. We've got our very own uh, Macbeth scenario here. Yeah, he was much more concerned with his mistress, <laughs> who he saw frequently, and actually had a secret tunnel to go visit. Mm-hmm. And, cool. And, and she was kind of secreted away in the White House the whole time. <laughs> very hot stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um. It was also a matter of not only was this so well documented, so there was this thick, and it's all facts. Yeah. There's not a lot of fluff in there. Uh, so well documented, discovered at the time, uncovered with the help of newspapers and senator uh, senators and the public knowledge. And with all that, and this is the part that bothers me and should bother everybody and why apathy is not okay, um, nothing was ever done. It no. pretty much petered out because you could just drag the trials on until the American people no longer cared because there were bigger things to be worried about. Right. Like poverty. Yeah. Well, and this was, like, was it the the big, the first, scan, like, big government scandal? Like, the next one was Watergate? I don't know. 
I don't think that anything, in fact, I know that nothing was this well documented before yeah. this time period. Because From what I understand, this was the first biggie. Mm hmm. Like, okay. That, that sort of shook, you know, everybody's um, you know, kind of belief in, in government. That, that this kind of, be, this level of behavior could go on at that high level. Yeah. That would make sense to me. And it was extensive. And I don't know in prior administrations that it could have been that extensive. Right. There wasn't that much money to be had. Uh, one of the other things is a lot of the stuff that happened in this book, uh, a lot of the safeguards that were put in place so that this wouldn't happen, the checks and balances that were well established, were systematically removed by... You had to not import one crook, but import an entire cabinet full of them yeah. because you needed people on both sides to cooperate. And they got that throughout the entirety of the administration. So safeguards that were put in place for uh, the, the forest reserve and to ensure that the oil uh, uh, wasn't given away and to make sure that uh, medicinal uh, certificates couldn't be written out by certain peoples. All of those were stripped away. Right. And a lot of them have never gone back. Yeah. Well, and the, and the way that they, they did all that was that, um, like I said, you know, it was kind of Big Oil who, who targeted Harding. And then um, when Harding got, you know, appointed the presidency, he basically hired that whole group. They were that Ohio gang. Um, because they were mostly Ohio politicians. So he basically hired them all into extremely um, powerful positions. And um, Fall, who was the uh, sort of manipulator of all this, um, he, he arranged for the, these oil fields to be taken away from the, the department they were with. I don't remember who that uh, And put it into the department. It was, it was, was the with interior. the Navy. It was, the, it was with the, the Navy, Navy, and he had it switched to his yeah. head of the Department of Interior. Right. So he had it all switched over to him. So they basically just had this little circle of, of resources and power and Harding's blessing. Um, and, uh, and he actually, Fall got put in that place. He's the only outsider from the Ohio gang, uh, the only one in this entire corruption scandal that didn't have a hand in getting Harding elected. Yeah. And the reason that happened was the guy that was supposed to take that job pre-slated, if we get this guy in, you to get the Secretary of Department of the Interior, was shot by his mistress. Yeah. Because he was told he had to leave the mistress in order to get the job because mm -hmm. it was high profile. Which, which I, I thought was hilarious. Harding, the king of the mistress, <laughs> um, told, um, what was his name? Hammond. Hammond. Um, that he had to go back to his wife and leave his mistress if he wanted to come and work on the, the Harding presidency because Harding's wife said so. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew about all of his her mis his mistress. Yes. She sounded there was like something trail. else. Oh, and we're not talking like we called her the Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> Which is right up your alley. Desperate <laughs> duchesses. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she was desperate. <laughs> no. <laughs> she seemed to know what she was doing. Although why she put up with Harding, I don't know, but well, because look where I got her. Yeah. She had furs. Yeah. And she actually uh, these these affairs were not like Oops, we're having an affair. They would be more appropriately called like second wives yeah. because uh, there were multiple children involved mm -hmm. here. Like Nan, the one that was in the White House, uh, had a child that they had, uh, and that was over a ten year relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all these guys, you know, Hammond included, who got shot by the mistress. I mean, they, these were nasty guys. You know, they were uh, just corruption and. And greed and, you know, all the, the stereotypical, you know, trappings of power gone bad. Yeah. Although I will say they were really nice to each other. <laughs> and oh, nice yeah. enough to people that mattered. And, and that even our hero that comes in later, uh, Wallace who's a senator that's actually a straight shooter, which is really hard to find in this administration, uh, in, in government. At yeah, time. I was actually impressed that it was a Democrat and a Republican who went after them, like, together. Yeah, yeah. At the and time, the politics were not that... 
they're not what they are today. It's really interesting to me seeing what the political structures were. The things that I could still see happening today were the things that were scandalous and horrible. The things I had problems seeing in today's society were things like when Wallace wanted to team up and, and you know, with a Republican. And the, the lines are too, too drawn at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, I, I don't think I liked it quite as much as you did. Like, it's not one of my favorite books ever. But um, I liked it. I, I wish I had read it rather than listened to it because um, it was a little hard to follow. That's kind of why I went back and just sort of made sure I had everything straight. Um, I, I took notes today. <laughs> um, I was super afraid of that. When <laughs> I had my fault uh, recommended. I was like, oh, no, this will be a great one for audio book. Because in my head, I'm thinking, soap opera. And it didn't occur to me until I picked the book back up to read. Like, it's probably my third time going through it. I'm like, oh, this is really thick. And there are a lot of names. And the ones that always throw me, which actually would be better on audiobook, and it's hard in the book. Three major players there. Donahue, uh, Denby, Dohini, Dohini, Denby, Doherty. and Doherty. Yeah. And- oh yeah. my god! <laughs> I seriously wrote out little mini biographies for each of them. Yeah. Yeah. I did kind of did the same thing. So I was like, let me see if I have everybody straight here. I actually have, every time I've read this, I've wanted to have, and, and I've I've been so interested in it that I've started it before and then decided that it is so not worth it, is I want a flow chart. I want a flow yeah. chart. This whole book is just a really complicated flow chart. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was rough to try and listen to that. I mean, the, the easy parts were the, the sort of the really scandalous parts, you know, like murder and mistresses <laughs> and all that stuff was easy to follow. But when you were getting into a lot of the facts and especially when the, the trial started... It was it was difficult kind of to keep up with. I will say when this trial starts in the book, I, I don't know how you felt about it, but I I feel like it's kind of like um oh what's uh Full Metal Jacket, the movie. Where I've seen that. Oh my god. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they probably I was not. in civil air control, so I'm, I like was able to quote it and for me to be able to do that it's it's bad. Um you can see the first half or the second half, and people are clearly divided on which part they'll watch. And yeah. people will watch each one as an individual movie. And I feel like this book was that yeah. way. You get through the administration, and then the trial starts, and it's like drop kicks right. you into this whole different world. I, I stop reading at that point. Well, the first part is more of a story, and this, I mean, there's facts. But it's, it's told in more of a story fashion. And then when you start getting to the trial, there's still some in there. Because there's still stuff happening when the trial happens. Because, um, you know, somebody was... It, it, it was so called suicide, but it was pretty certain that he was murdered by... Um, I can't remember who it was that they, they thought murdered him. Was it was it Doherty? Doherty writing uh, murder Donnie? It was uh, Jess Smith. Oh, yeah. Was the the one who was killed. And there was um, an attorney who was killed, or he died. Um, There was a lot of suspicious deaths and suicides. (laughs) Oh, the book has murder! (laughs) Yeah. Um, So there was still stuff like that happening, but there was also just a lot of um, sort of the details of the trial and... Oh, that's the Duchess over here. And Harding. Yeah. She liked her first. She, oh, wow. She does look like a Duchess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that, especially listening to it, was was pretty dry, but still interesting. Yeah. I, I still thought it was good, and I didn't know any of this. I mean, I, you had told me a little bit about the, the Teapot Dome sample, but I didn't know any of it, really. Mm-hmm. I I always want to read uh, historical books, like actual historical books, not historical fiction, but like I, I want to know yeah. what happened to bring us to where we are today. And the problem with that is that they're very hard to read. They're yeah. dense books, they're boring, and you're trying to glean a lot of information out and you end up not knowing which names are important to re- remember and which ones aren't. And, right. They're plows. 
And I felt like this book was not a plow for me. Yeah. I could get through it. I felt like I learned a ton about our government, mm-hmm. away, the way we formed, uh, the way um, things are actually run, granted under a different time period, but it, there, there is a direct lineage yeah. to where we are now. And it was visible, easy to trace, mm-hmm. and um, it shed a lot of light on what, what we've got. Right. Well, kind of, kind of related to that. This was also. I don't know if they said this in the book, but I, I saw this today. When I was looking things up. Um, this was also the birth of the FBI, because the um, Bureau of Investigation then was caught uh, eavesdropping um, and doing surveillance of um, the prosecuting senators. So. Um, they got in trouble for that, and they realized they needed more checks and balances, so then they created the FBI with Hoover as the director. <laughs> so we all know where that went. Uh, <laughs> we spies for our spies. Tried. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make this corruption and scandal and make more corruption and scandal. <laughs> it's the American way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, like, I am actually a really big fan of big government. <laughs> so reading this and how horribly awry it goes, like, I, I can understand why people are very suspicious <laughs> of our government, and rightly so. Um, which is which is kind of why, like, I I I liked it and I found it interesting and it was very informative, but it wasn't necessarily like earth shattering because, like, this is kind of my view. Of- Government. I guess that's that's very sad. <laughs> it's it's but, always been my view. It's it was interesting to me the documentation of it. Yeah, um, the fact that it all got into public view, and none of it was hidden better than like a kid hiding behind a curtain. Right. You know, you, I can see your feet, and still the American people did nothing about it. <laughs> Same as it is now. <laughs> <laughs> there are M- WMDs. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am surprised. Like, I would have thought that people back then might have been more um, paying more attention to what was going on in the government just because I feel like, um, you know, I blame the media a lot today uh, because that's where we get our news and it's often not really news. Um, and I feel like it's a lot of work to go and dig through and, and figure out like what's actually going on and nonpartisan kind of views on things. And my thought would have been that, that back then it would have been better, but I, I don't, I'm not sure it's ever been better really. And then if you, if you look, you know, kind of over at European history and it's, it's not even better. I know. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, keep in mind, this is the time period of yellow journalism, though. Yeah. In which case, this is before our, albeit very weak, laws of, uh, what do they call it? Um, you have to tell the truth. I mean, granted, they're very weak. They're, the candidates are very strong. But we, we do have some um, uh, truth in advertising sort of crap. Um, this it was a time period where newspapers were just coming about. Okay. So... They were just as corrupt as the government. The, in fact, um, it, it has one of the things in here is uh, direct documentation of the RNC purchasing a newspaper to promote Harding. Like, they just bought the newspaper. It was campaign funds, spent like a million dollars, bought the newspaper, and printed out every day how awesome Harding was. Yeah. And that was just, that was like Washington Post. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody but, liked it because you know you didn't know enough to know that it's wrong for the RNC to own the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which and, and, I mean, still, I feel like that is sort of the case today. I mean, not not so. I kind we've of gotten lately, better not at so uh, obfuscating. Uh, we we've gotten better yeah. at smokes and mirrors, but and I, and so so somebody said uh, uh, the other. Day in a conversation I was having that they just wish like they like the media would could just come out and say you know because th- th- historically there are you know conservative papers liberal papers and they 
say that that's what they are. He was like, I wish they would just say <laughs> that that's what they are. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to just know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that would help. I really, I don't know. That it no, would. it probably wouldn't. I mean, that there's everything would still be divided, but <laughs> but it's a good idea. So, Teapot Dome, would you recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. And um, um, you know, I guess with the the caveat that it's a it's a historical novel, it's not dry like a sort of traditional historical no- or book, but. Um, it's not biography level. But it's not, yeah, it's not, um, like, story, story all the way through either. Yeah. But it's somewhere in between. It is definitely something that I would not recommend, and I realize this in hindsight, for, like, a book club or something, because it is too thick and meaty to get well, through in a short period of time. But if yeah. you've got a good, I would like a good book this month. This is an excellent book if you've got the time. Right. And you're interested in history. I mean, yeah. most people have a pretty clear idea whether they like nonfiction history kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I like it. Like you said, sometimes it's hard to read. Um, but um, but I do like it, and I, and I it fits well written. Um, I, I find it informative. And this was, you know, it did have a lot of entertainment quality to it, too. So yeah, that was nice. There, there was a lot of stuff about secret passageways and <laughs> all the bad games. stuff was the entertaining yeah, stuff. I, I kind of found that wild that people actually did this stuff. There really was a part of this scandal where they called in dancers from New York. They decided that they would dance on the table at three a.m. Everybody was super drunk. The table was full of food still, so the guests decide, dancers are going to be on the table, let's clear it off, and start, like, throwing bottles. One of the dancers gets hit in the head, passes out, and they can't call because everyone's drunk, and it's the Harding administration, like, Harding's there, and, um, it's prohibition, so, yeah. So the girl... Oh, and, and there was lots of relationship with, like, bootleggers. And, oh, yeah. You the know. bootleggers were buying for a buck each the um, medicinal producing mm-hmm. purchases right from Donny. Uh, he made a few million because he'd, he'd write thousands of them in a day. So at one buck each, it doesn't sound like a lot. Mu- I don't know how we got through, kept track of all those, but he'd just sit down with people and, like, here you go, medicinal mm-hmm. purposes... And he, he was not Secretary of the Interior. What was he? Uh, he Secretary of State? Uh, da, da, da. I know I have him hit here somewhere. Do, do. I think it's the second page here. Sorry. Attorney General. Yes. yes. Attorney General. He was the Attorney General. So, um, Doherty. Harry Doherty. Yes. Do- Doheny was one of the oil guys. See, I told you, these names are ridiculous. You should yeah. have changed the names for, you know, to protect the innocent. No, just so I don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when um, in Wolverine X-Men they had to make the girls different hair color because to make sure people could... I would like that. I am the idiot that needs a redhead, a blonde, and a brunette. <laughs> yeah, the, name, the names were uh, confusing. Because the one I remembered the most was Fall, just because it's like, he has oh, a very distinct name. name. I'm really <laughs> Let's keep talking about him. Mm-hmm. And actually, that was a, that's a really good point. Is I really liked um, the characters in this book. They were characters. Yes. Fall was a Wild West man, like, to the point where um, he actually... We know, we have on documentation here, that he would get into, like, six-shooter fights, like, okay, corral style. He, uh, he met one of the characters in this because he had drunkenly been running away from somebody chasing him. Not Fall, this, this other guy who was it. I think it was Denby. And he turns around and shoots the guy and manages, like, the drunken guy chasing him, manages to shoot him in the knee instead of the chest. And... Fall came over and congratulated him on this. And then they both went back to the saloon. Right. <laughs> well, and in the beginning, like, the like John Ringling of the Ringling Brothers was, like, part of this crew. Um, 
they because they had uh, like he and Hammond and Doherty had all built a railroad together. So uh, Ringling was actually helpful in making the connection between Hammond, who was the guy who was taught by his mistress, and uh, Doherty, who ended up being uh, the campaign manager and then eventually was the attorney general um, for Harding. So yeah, a lot of a lot of characters. Um, and you can see their ambitions really clearly. Uh, like each one, um, Fall uh, had just lost his children in Mexico to Spanish flu. And uh, at this point in his life, just wanted money. Yeah. Uh, he, he had yeah, lost Yeah, I think he actually just came out and said that. It, he's like, all I want is money. <laughs> uh, there, there was, um, I think it was Hammond. Who, who had the mistress Roxy? No, ex-wife Roxy. Um, um, that, that, oh, that was, was just Smith. Jeff Smith. Jeff, he was the one who, who was suicide, not suicide. Yeah, got shot. And Roxy was warning him about that. But he just wanted to be the cool guy. Like, it's actually... Yeah, he was, he was kind here. of like a, a follower. Um, he just them. admired them and saw yeah. what they were doing and was like, look, I'm cool too. But he, he kind of started to have... He's kind of started... 